on our life's journey as we seek purpose and connection. We are called, called to place our faith and trust in something greater than our own understanding. We are called by someone who already loves us and offers himself to us, Jesus Christ, his body given daily, his blood poured out for us. We never journey alone in life. Through the Eucharist, we encounter his real presence and others who share our faith. Together, we become one with him in his very flesh. And when we bring his presence out into the world, we can be light for others. This is the gospel call to make disciples of all nations, laying down our lives for others. The time is now to unite our hearts with his for the life of the world. Good morning, my dear friends, and once again, welcome to the Childless of Salvation, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel here at St. Michael's Cathedral. I'm your Childless host, Passionist, Brother Taryn Scanlon. I hope you are able to stay cool during our recent heat spell. Our thoughts are with all who are impacted by this summer extreme weather. On this 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, God draws us together to be nourished by the Word and the Eucharist. We may take our faith for granted, but today's gospel reminds us what a gift we have been given by God. Our faith, like the kingdom of heaven, is a treasure. Jesus' gift of his body, broken and shared for us all, is a treasure. His command to continue to celebrate the Eucharist in his memory is a treasure. Let us give thanks to God for these gifts we treasure. We welcome to our chapel as our celebrant on this final Sunday of July, our Bishop William Byrne. We are honored and pleased by his presence. Our mass intention this morning is in loving memory of Sharon Dreden, a former longtime volunteer of Faith on Fire. This mass was requested by her friends. Rennie Hadley from St. Rose de Lima Parish Community in Chicopee will be our music minister. And we welcome members and ladies guild from St. Patrick's in South Hadley, along with staff from our Diocesan Pastoral Center to the Holy Spirit Chapel this very day. And friends, as we celebrate our Mass, we send our best wishes to those celebrating those birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. A very happy belated birthday to a loyal chalice viewer from Ludlow, Jane Sweden, a parishioner of Christ the King Parish. Jane celebrated her 102nd birthday last week, and we wish you many more. An anniversary greetings go out to our loyal chalice viewers, John and Marge Pompey. The parishioners of St. Mary's Parish in Lee recently marked their 65th wedding anniversary. Indeed, our sincere congratulations to you both. And friends, as we do each week, we are mindful of all those who are ill or homebound, especially our viewers who are watching this broadcast from their hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. Please know that you're always in our prayers. And as always, we will be placing the names that have been sent in to us by you, our Chalice viewers, into our Book of Remembrance. Due to a technical issue, last week's entries were not shown. We do apologize for any inconvenience that may have caused that. All the names sent in for last week's will be included today. 
We pray for the souls of all the faithful departed, that they are resting in the gentle presence of our Lord. And friends, after Mass, Steve Katana will bring us to St. Stanislaus School in Chicopee as they marked our 125th anniversary earlier this year, along with the retirements of two important leaders. Please stay tuned for that story. We now turn to Annie Hadley for our opening hymn of, as we greet our Bishop, Bishop William Byrne, and together celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. On this 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we hear our Lord liken the kingdom of God to a great pearl, uh, a pearl of great value and beauty. So it is that we come here to capture, to experience the most precious gift, our Lord in the Holy Eucharist prepare ourselves to celebrate together these sacred mysteries. Let us first call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Praise you, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory 
to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O oh Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your mouth to me is more precious than thousands of gold or silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward. Every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words shed light giving understanding to the simple. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those he predestined he also called, and those he called he also justified, and those he justified he also glorified. The word of the Lord. are you father lord of heaven and earth for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom alleluia alleluia the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in searching for fine pearls. When he finds the pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets, but the bad they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I love the image of the kingdom of heaven being like a pearl of great price. Meaning that whatever it is that you have in your life, it's not nearly as valuable and as nearly as precious. You'd leave everything else behind just for that treasure. You'd give whatever you had to possess it. And it really does ask us all, what is most important? What is it that I most deeply desire in my life? Just recently we had the mega billion, millions, now it's billions it seems like, for a one billion dollar prize. And each of us, who doesn't fantasize about winning that and thinking, oh, just being able to take care of my family's needs, to be able to uh, give to the church to be able to help others in need to be completely free. That might seem like a great pearl to win the mega lottery. But interestingly enough, a few years back, they did a study about against two groups of people. Those that hit mega lotteries, and the other group were those who were recently paralyzed in an accident. It's kind of two 
odd combinations to compare, but one is a tragedy, the other is a great, uh, a great uh, uh, a reward. And as they studied them, they studied metrics of happiness. After six months, who was happier? After a year, who was happier? And it turned out that the paralyzed individuals were substantially happier than those who had won a mega lottery. You're like, what? That seems to defy all the odds. But in reality, the first group that had been paralyzed, everyone in their life surrounded them, surrounded them with support, with love, with help. The relationships and ties of friendship and family only grew stronger through the tragedy. Whereas those who had hit the big lotteries, all of a sudden everyone was on the take. Everyone was asking for something. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And then when they couldn't or didn't, the relationship went away. So this key idea of that, it's not what we would imagine is gonna bring us the great joy, something ever deeper. The great pearl is what Solomon was able to recognize. You see, when he, God said to him a dream, you can have whatever you want. And, and I, I fear that I wouldn't have been Solomon. I would have woken up with a full head of hair and <laughs> a whole lot less gut. But uh, Solomon asked for the right thing. When he could have had anything, he said, give me the wisdom. Give me the wisdom to, to rule. I'm young. And God gives him the wisest heart of all time, the wisest mind of all time. And wouldn't this be a perfect prayer for each one of us? That if we want to seek the pearl of great price is to begin to recognize what's really valuable in our lives, what's really important, how do I live that kingdom of God by cherishing those things, by loving those things, by living those things? We pray for so many things. What about wisdom for ourselves? You know, to live in the kingdom of God, it, it rearranges our priority and it certainly challenges them. One of the things we always have to look at is to see, does my checkbook reflect a kingdom of God? Hmm. How about cable TV versus giving to the poor? Which, which is more, my luxury items, my comfort goods, versus finding Christ in the hungry, in the, the, those who are marginalized, in the unborn, or, or my prayer in private time. Do I stare more at my phone or at the Bible? Am I looking at a screen or at a tabernacle? And I'm challenged by this as much as, as each one of us are. Am I seeking the face of Christ in those who are, who need my time. You see, this is how we find the kingdom of God, by first recognizing where the kingdom of God is, what the great pearl of, of great beauty and value is, and then seeking it. But first, like Solomon, let us together ask for the wisdom to know the difference. Praise be Jesus Christ. Let us stand now and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God said to Solomon, ask something of me and I will give it to you. We hope to emulate the wise Solomon as we turn to God with our petitions. Our response this morning will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may joyfully share the treasure of our faith with those searching for hope, for peace, and for meaning. Let, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That our nation leaders may exercise wisdom, remnants of solemns when working to make our country a more perfect union. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For peace on our streets peace among nations, and peace in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may, that each of us may nurture our understanding heart, exercises by treating others with kindness and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those traveling to Portugal for World Youth Day, especially our diocesan pilgrims, may the Holy Spirit be with our young people on their pilgrim journey of faith. Give them the grace and courage to step forward in faith and hope on the road ahead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our We remember this day Sharon Drennan, from whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who will be listed in today's Book of Remembrance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our God of wisdom and mercy, in your generosity you have blessed us with the promise of the kingdom of heaven. May we treat your kingdom as the treasure it is and pursue it with a joy of those in the gospel. Grant this to all and all our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy wisdom, lamp of learning, Bless the light that reason lands. Teach us judgment as we kindle sparks of thought your spirit sends. Sanctify our search for knowledge and the truth that sets us free. Come illumine mind and spirit joined in deepest unity. Vine of truth, in you we flourish. By your grace we learn and grow. May the word of Christ among us shape our life, our search to know. Join to Christ in living, dying, May we help the church convey witness to the saving gospel, bearing fruit of faith today. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins, 
From his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by his ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Sharon, whom you called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, brother. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. We say the word and my soul shall be. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Comfort, hear our prayer. 
in weakness, in fear. Be near, hear our prayer, O God. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. For healing, for wholeness, for new life, hear our prayer. In sickness, in death, be near, hear our prayer, O God. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Before we do that, I just want to say to all of those who are watching those who are homebound, I would like you to uh, pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life from this diocese. Uh, we have such a, a great need. It will be the source of the Eucharist in the future from, these, from priests in absolution. So pray for a new generation of vocations. We need them very badly. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Span the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Hi, Mom. What are you doing today? Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one- and two-bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, 
restaurant-style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. life's journey as we seek purpose and connection. We are called, called to place our faith and trust in something greater than our own understanding. We are called by someone who already loves us and offers himself to us, Jesus Christ, his body given daily, his blood poured out for us. We never journey alone in life. Through the Eucharist, we encounter his real presence and others who share our faith. Together, we become one with him in his very flesh. And when we bring his presence out into the world, we can be light for others. This is the gospel call to make disciples of all nations, laying down our lives for others. The time is now to unite our hearts with his for the life of the world. Before students and teachers headed out on their summer vacations, St. Stanislaus Elementary School in Chicopee recently held a very special mass and gala banquet. It was the culmination of a full year's worth of activities marking the 125th anniversary of the school and sadly, the retirement of two longtime administrators. Steve Katanek has the story. On June 11th, St. Stanislaus School completed its 125 year anniversary celebration with a mass and banquet in the school auditorium. With students today enrolling from many communities and faiths, Father Brad Malunsky said St. Stanislaus has evolved from a strictly parish school without losing its true identity. We really maintain a strong Catholic and a strong Franciscan identity that people come here. Uh, some people come, you know, of course, there may be even people of of little or no faith, or maybe not even practicing, but they sense that there's something different about this place. The beginnings of St. Stanislaus School goes back to 1897, when three sisters of the Felician Order established the first St. Stanislaus School in the basement of the church. In 1902, the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph replaced the Felicians to instruct children of Polish immigrants in their native language and instill the religious teachings and values of the Catholic faith. To accommodate the growing enrollment, a new school was built in 1925 with 25 classrooms and a spacious auditorium. In 1973, a devastating three-alarm fire destroyed the cherished brick building. Students were sent to Mont Marie and Westover Air Base for classes while a new school was being built. It took nearly two years, but in 1975, a new pre-K through eighth grade building rose from the ashes. It has been thriving over the past 47 years. St. Stanislaus School has had numerous Franciscan principles throughout its history. Sister Cecilia Hare, known as Sister Seal, is its most recent. She and Assistant Principal Karen Shea arrived at St. Stan's in 1988. 
Sister Seal came from Milwaukee, while Shea is a lifelong parishioner of St. Stan's. She attended St. Stan's school, and her children and grandchildren followed. Both started as seventh grade teachers. Sister Seal taught math, Shea civics. There is a true family atmosphere here, and people reach out to one another and care for one another, and that tradition continues for generations. And we now still have students whose parents and grandparents came to school here. Then as they become parents, they remember some of those important values and things they learned here, and they want that for their children. And that's a positive uh, reflection on what this school offers. Trudy Juck is a longtime parishioner whose life revolved around the church and school. Like her parents, she attended St. Stan's School. Her children and grandchildren also graduated. It was all nuns, and they had an, a, a, a a house next door to the school before it burned, and uh, they were good. I mean, they really taught you all the subjects and everything, and I loved it. Juck also volunteered and worked in the main office for 22 years, creating all of the colorful banners which reflect the yearly faith-based school themes established by Sister Seal and Shea during summer retreats to the beach. Since 1999, when both transferred to administrative positions, Sister Seal and Shea have worked as a team, dividing up responsibilities according to each other's strengths. And I was overwhelmed by her knowledge of this place and, and how easily she seemed to navigate things. Um, but we, over the years, uh, we have grown to know each other and, and, and appreciate and respect each other um, as working colleagues. Their leadership pushed the school to achieve high academic success, with the school being accredited three times during their tenure. This year, St. Stan's also garnered the most Reader's Raves votes as Mass Alive's best private school in Western Mass. Other notable accomplishments for Sister Seal and Shea include the school's growth in technology, with each student having their own laptop and the addition of programs like robotics. Also, the preschool program was expanded to include three-year-olds, and a much-needed playground was built on school grounds. Their goals for the school and students are driven by the Franciscan philosophy. We're hoping that the children develop a love for education and want to continue to learn, become critical thinkers, and become good people. We're preparing them for heaven someday. That they become good citizens. More than any academic subject we teach them, if we help them to make a positive impact on the world around them, then we've done our job. Luke Sarlin, Juck's grandson, graduated in 2021. Now a junior at Pope Francis Prep, Sarlin achieved much success as a student. He was one of three students, all from St. Stan's, who was a Catholic Citizenship Contest winner. St. Stan's is like, a, a, it's a good family. Everybody's just looking out for you, and I guess all the teachers want you to succeed, and they want to see you, like, go somewhere in life. The 125th anniversary celebration included a series of activities held throughout the year. Some of the events included an alumni basketball jamboree, a ladies tea party, an alumni mass celebrated by Father Matthew Guidi, an alumnus, and a family barbecue. Also, a new St. Stanislaus statue for the school lobby was dedicated on May 8th in the gymnasium. Shea spearheaded the event to replace the original statue borrowed from the church. With Father Milonsky's approval, Shea did the research and found a company in Italy that carved handmade wooden statues. I am just amazed at this statue. It is, it is better than I ever anticipated it to be. So I think that's great. I think that it will be a wonderful addition to our lobby. As you can see, he stands in blessing. The culmination of the anniversary year included a banquet. Alumni could browse through the various memorabilia on display, which included yearbooks, photos, diplomas, and news clips. Just as Sister Seal and Karen Shea arrived at St. Stanislaus together 35 years ago, they are leaving together. In July, each begins a well-deserved retirement. Sister Seal and Shea thank the entire St. Stanislaus community and their families who attended for letting them pursue and achieve their dreams for the school. Uh, yes. What do you got to miss the most, you think? Kids. Yeah, the people. Yeah. yeah. Seeing those children, hearing their laughter, and their, seeing their smiling faces. Yeah, I agree. It, it is the people and the relationships you 
we've built over the years. So I definitely will miss uh, being here at St. Stan's and uh, the, the children are the joy. About a year ago, both agreed the anniversary year was the right time to pass the torch to someone else. The new principal is Catherine Morio, a former student and teacher at St. Stan's and lifelong parishioner. And I know the Franciscan tradition lives on in you. God bless you and keep you. As the school year ends, one generation says goodbye and closes the book, while another generation begins a new chapter at St. Stanislaus School. I'm Steve Kiltonic. Thanks, Steve. We wish Sister Seal and Karen Shea a happy and restful, restful retirement. My sincere thanks to Bishop William Byrne for celebrating our Mass this morning. We're also grateful to Ernie Hadley for providing our music ministry. And mark your calendars on Friday, August 25th, the Faith on Fire Catholic Rally will again be taking place at Sacred Heart Parish in Feeding Hills. The evening will feature talks from Bishop Byrne, Father David Afiero, and Father Anthony Grimlick. This is in addition to praise and worship music, reconciliation, and Eucharistic procession. Again, Faith on Fire, August 25th, starting at 6 p.m. at Sacred Heart Parish Community in Feeding Hills. And friends, just a reminder that information sessions for men interested in joining the diaconate program are currently being held throughout the diocese. If you are considering whether you may be called to God's service in this way, please consider attending in either Springfield, Pittsfield, or Hadley. All the information is at dialspringfield.org. If you would like more information or cannot make one of the sessions, please call Deacon David Picard at 413-452-0674. Again, that number is 413-452-0674. And coming up next Saturday, August the 5th, at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, we'll be hosting a day-long Equidentro Latino celebration. This Spanish language event will run from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Shrine on Eden Hill. The day will be filled with music, reflections, holy hours, and mass. For more information on this event, log on to iobserve.org. We also want to send our prayers to Joe Austin, the Diocesan Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministry, and the young people from, the, from our diocese who have traveled to Portugal for World Youth Day with Pope Francis. We hope they all have a blessed experience in such a holy place. We have coverage this week on iobserve.org or Diocesan News website. That's iobserve.org. Asking you to join us again next Sunday as we welcome Father Francis Riley, pastor of St. Jerome's Parish in Holyoke, as our Mass presider for the celebration of the Transfiguration. Again, that's next Sunday at 10 a.m. for your Childless of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. Sending all in our viewing community our love and prayers. God bless. See you next Sunday.